one soil test to rule them all. Is that realistic? Are we in the Lord of the Rings and I didn't know it? Because everyone's talking about how you just need one test. You just need one soil test. If you just do this one thing, all your, all your dreams will be answered. Mm, that doesn't sound quite right. But then when you look at some of these test results, I, you look up Texas A&M's garden, lawn, orchard, and almost every single one is exactly the same recommendations other than a tiny, like, like maybe 10 more parts per million on like one or two variables for peaches. But that's it. They literally have no differentiation. And, 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 and everyone is testing and no one's paying attention to what the results are across the board. This is like a type one error where you're like thinking everything's going right. The testers think everything's going right. The, the people receiving the test thinks everything's right. And it's all false positives. And, and it's not all false positives, right, right, right. But it's, it creates an overall sense of security that itself is a false positive. So I'm seeing in my classes for my students, and we're all seeing at the same time, how divergent recommendations are, how divergent, like uh, even in the same bioregion. And, and, and so what, what not only we've come to realize <laughs> that the testing methodologies themselves need to like have some reflection and time, you know what I mean? To, to like reevaluate and, and probably improve, but all tests have limitations. So traditional soil mineral tests are only reliable for five minerals. And then the rest, it's, it's, it's a guesstimate. It's a rough estimate because they're only testing for a certain form or state of that mineral. Meanwhile, biology, weather, changes in uh, the EH or pH will release or lock up things that you know, don't show up sometimes or they show up and they don't go in the plant. This is, this is why we have John Kempf now. This is why we have, uh, 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 you know, uh, AEA now because they're filling that gap with new testing methodologies, combining several different kinds of tests and still seeking and uh, trying to make new forms of tests that combine into a new form of testing. So this is, this is something that a lot of people are working on right now currently. There's a lot of new meters, a lot of spectrometers, lots of things in, in the mix. But even those tests will have limitations, but they'll improve over time as they learn. The respiration tests like Solvita and the Haney test, they look for waterlogged conditions, anaerobic conditions for what happens. So it's not really an accurate snapshot of like what daily life is for soil or soil microbes and even soil microscopy has limitations with bacteria for instance um, you can't identify pathogenic e coli with a bright field uh, there are certain dyes that you can buy very expensive but you can't see they're bacilli shaped they're nondescript so you can't see e coli that are pathogenic from regular e coli or anything bacillus or bacilli shaped. So it, 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 it's, it's impossible to di differentiate. And, and this is why people are saying, you know, you need soil DNA testing, but that too has its limitations. It's great at grabbing the DNA, even in the chaos of, of, of the soil solution, but fungi are actually very difficult to read. And so people are using PCR, which is like a delay pedal on a signal. And so when you do the chaos of a soil solution, it's a delay pedal on everything. It's like a million different things. And it creates total chaos and it creates tons of mutations and just creates soup. And so it can read as anything. And that's a very dangerous thing to do. And so whether it's like blood or soil or, or, or something complicated, you, you don't want to do like uh, PCR and especially you don't want to like do high cycles. And that's why you know, PCR is largely on the way out because of nanopore technology, which is a one-to-one. -one. It reads the DNA right there in real time. There's long, <laughs> there's long format fungal read programs and protocols that are being worked on right now by Oxford Nanopore 
that I am going to be implementing in the next month, month and a half. So I'm going to have a lot more to say about the DNA nanopore side of that one because there's dozens of combinations of tests and methodologies and new emerging preps and it's a the cutting edge and there's new things coming all the time. Six months from now, this might not even be an issue and we might all have all the fungi being mapped through the DNA side as well. Well, let's be ready for that, of course. But at the same time, like let's see the limitations for where we are right now so that we can encourage those people out there to, to fix those problems sooner uh, so that we all can see those connections um, and, and, and prove out what we're seeing under the microscope with the DNA testing working together. Because the mycology folk are really, really good at IDing fungi but because of horizontal gene transfer, because our muscular mycorrhizal fungi and other fungi can borrow the nuclei of everyone else, nearly everyone else, um, other species, other fungi, um, the, 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 we really need that DNA testing to see what's being expressed and selected from the bank of fragmented DNA that's all over everything and comprises a huge bulk of the soil itself. DNA doesn't go away. It fragments and then fragments more and then fragments more. And in order to you know test for it, we need to use very caustic things to actually break it down. So, and theoretically, it's been said that DNA can last millions of years. So, there's a lot here. There's, there, there's so much, and, and the thing is, you're like, whoa, wait. If I want to PCR these things and, and just see the fungi there, well, let's think about that. It's not in its natural state, and then you PCR'd it, so you've created this echo, na 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 na, and it has mutations, and maybe it's you did a plate, you know, color, colony forming unit, and you did a little plate uh, petri dish, and you you took that piece of fungi that grew out in the plate, and then you you actually did. But how do you know the fungal to bacterial ratio from the original soil? You've done a selection process by feeding it that agar. You've seen who can survive outside of the soil separated from the soil that's fungal that feeds on agar. So it's like we must, with open eyes, travel into the world of soil testing and understand that Everything has limitations, but when we map those limitations out, we actually can see the parameters for how they're useful and how they're not useful. So then we can compensate with other tests to create a complete or more complete picture because soil is an incredibly holistic picture and we're constantly seeing new ways to measure and understand and compare soils. And so because of all this, it became clear to me that something needed to be done. Something needed to be done to transcend the current model of learning and sharing information and testing in general in the soil world. So in response to this, I started to develop new protocols based on the principles behind how all labs develop their protocols because everyone has to develop their protocols for measuring and counting bacteria given their specific medium whether you're you're talking about animal tissue or blood or soil like they all have their own parameters so you have to go from the principles and then go up from there and it's something that you could design too so in response to all that i developed new protocols and in some cases saving hundreds of dollars like with the live dead stain so instead of paying like 600 or 800 dollars for like this test kit that i get to use soil with a certain number of times for under $100, I have a lifetime supply of a stain that was thought to be not useful for this device. But because of modern technology combining <laughs> with new ways of doing things that wasn't anticipated when the original literature was written about this stain in the 60s and 70s and 80s, they didn't anticipate what we can do now. And it's combining these tests into like a Venn diagram, much like the permaculture Venn diagram to actually see what's true or truer than what we understand now. 
So we can't do that from creating pyramids and trapping the information at the top and siloing information and uh, this endless game where they publish with a headline of the university and they don't show their data. And there's some great scientists that show their data and their methodologies and encourage you to go home and do it like Dr. James White. Unbelievable. Thank the like, I'm so thankful for that man. His national treasure. And but but there's so much locking up. There's so much siloing. There's so much lack of communication that we need something that's by the people and for the people, a way that we can communicate, a way that we can share this information and connect this information to show these limitations all the way. Because, you know, if, if, if those of us who have studying this and people who are doing meta studies of these things, given the published data, are seeing these limitations, what would happen if we all made a way that we can see those test results and compare them. I think it would change everything. I think it would be like an emperor wears no clothes moment. And a lot of soil science would snap into place and you wouldn't need convincing. Things would be self-evident and new insights would just unfold as we saw things from different powerful, different angles with massive amounts of input and data. So click the link down below and click the notification button because I'm gonna reveal what I'm talking about, the idea on June 15th here on YouTube. So I'm gonna break it all down, I'm gonna go through all the details. And and, and so just go down and click the link and uh, I think you'll be really excited about it. All right, I'm Matt Powers, grow abundantly, learn daily and live regeneratively. and. I will see you June 15th for a huge announcement. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.